Well, extremely simple. This is actually a special video about Nikola Tesla. I've seen easily every video, little snippet ever uh, made about Nikola Tesla. They would talk about his uh, Tesla coil and countless other things ad infinitum, but nobody ever in any video or any uh, biography of Tesla that I've ever read ever gets close to discussing what Nikola Tesla's secret was, and I'm going to get to that very, very shortly here, and I'm going to tell you how Nikola Tesla differed from other inventors, like Thomas Edison or uh, current scientists, and I'm going to give you a few quotes uh, from Nikola Tesla, and I'm actually uh, going to show you too, and I've talked about this endlessly, I'm big into an ancient lost secret of the Pythagoreans called uh, retroductions used by the Platonists, and the Pythagoreans, it's not induction or deduction, it's a retroduction. It's a means of discovery and realization um, by means and through which is not objectively knowable. But Tesla differed from people like Thomas Edison very succinctly, and I'm not referring to who they are as characters. We all know that um, uh, Thomas Edison, by the way, Thomas Edison's uh, summer a winter museum, excuse me, winter uh, residence is in uh, Fort Myers, literally a few blocks from where I live in Fort Myers. I've visited there many times. I don't have that much respect for Thomas Edison, even though he was a, you know, very prolific inventor. Uh, he differed um, specifically in the methodology that he actually took um, to actually arrive at conclusions. Obviously, uh, no one is going to, despite the fact that he was, you know, he you know, he electrocuted a lot of animals, and he wasn't all that super intelligent. I mean, Thomas Edison was obviously an intelligent inventor and a tinkerer. But I'm going to show you how Tesla differs from Edison and from uh, current scientists and give you a quote. And I'm going to show you succinctly what uh, he did that uh, made him uh, such a success, even though he died broken penniless. Uh, here is a, uh, one of, uh, an image from Tesla in one of his uh, later years. He's a very gaunt person. He actually had extremely huge bony hands. He obviously, I mean, it's a known fact that he was often seen, uh, you know, hammering nails and building uh, wooden trusses for uh, copper wiring for uh, countless uh, devices and experimentation, both in New Jersey and Colorado and uh, other places. I'm just going to show you a couple of these images and get quickly on to the secret of uh, Nikola Tesla. And he was a very brilliant man. And there's actually a book in, uh, I forget where it's at, it's in Serbia, it's the Tesla Museum in Serbia. There's an image of several of Nikola Tesla's uh, favorite books, and one of them is an image uh, of him with his hands, a very famous image. But uh, everybody loves showing this image because it's kind of uh, high resolution, I mean, considering they're really almost no good resolution. Man, look at those pointy shoes he's wearing. Uh, no one ever talks about uh, the book because back in the day, photographs were heinously staged. There was really no such thing as a casual photograph. I mean, they kind of didn't exist, so a lot of planning went into them. His boots sure are shiny there. He's always in several images. Uh, Nikola Tesla has his uh, hand on uh, his right hand on his temple. And uh, this is staged. There are many, many images of uh, different compositions where his right hand is pointing at his head and his left hand is... Uh, and this is... Uh, I think this is actually from a Greek um, mythological oppose where uh, the right hand is pointed to the higher and the left hand is directed towards invention or creation or uh, discovery. And uh, this is actually the... Uh, um, no one's ever said that before either, but that's actually, uh, I'm nearly certain where Nikola Tesla got it from. There's a lot of ancient um, metaphysical symbolism of uh, various gods and statues in ancient Greece, where uh, the god is, the fingers are pointed towards heaven or pointed towards their head, and the left hand is pointed uh, out or downwards towards creation, towards uh, their invention, towards their activity. And this is actually what Nikola Tesla is doing. But importantly, he has his hand on a, a book by Rodr Boscovich, his Theoria Philosophiae Naturalis. And you can actually download that for free on uh, archive.org. There's even an image of here, and T Nikola Tesla himself said that he loved dinner parties. He uh, really loved them. There's uh, 
mini notes where Nikola Tesla would uh, hear he is right here. Once again, you know, this is a staged photograph, obviously so. You know, there is no candid photography like photojournalism today. So Nikola Tesla, you know, has one hand on his lap and he is uh, right hand, once again, pointed at his temple. There are many pictures of Tesla in this uh, type of uh, pose where his right hand is pointing towards his head. You know, his source of his greatest delight, which he himself says in a direct quote, the discovery and the invention. But Nikola Tesla engaged in a type of uh, invention that's completely different than modern scientists. And modern scientists are not scientists in actuality. What they are is mathematicians. And mathematicians, they get lost in numbers and they completely have a break with reality. I've, I've had debates, literally, you know, face-to-face -face debates, and a debate doesn't mean argument, uh, with many such scientists. And uh, they're very easy to dominate because they will always state, well, does the math work? And I said, well, the math is not in question. The point is that math never explains anything because descriptions are not explanations. I could come up with a re reproducible experiment that anybody else in the world could reproduce, and uh, obviously the math would work, but that has absolutely no bearing on the accurate explanation of what is going on in the observed phenomena, be it the electric, magnetic, electrostatic, or whatever invention, or uh, or uh, uh field formula, even the Maxwellian field equations never define a field. They only express a field over a vector over a period of time with a given result, joules, watts, amps, volts, so on and so forth. Anyway, by the way, if you want to download this book, it's uh, it's uh, half in Latin and half in English. The English translation is from 1920 or something like that. The book was originally printed, uh, published in 1763. Yeah, 1922 is the Latin to English, it's the, uh, here it is right here. It's the Theoria Philosophia Naturalis. I warn you, however, if you try to read this, your brain will explode long before you even make it uh, halfway through one page. And I don't mean the Latin, I mean the English. You won't be able to make it. You think that's an exaggeration, but it's not. Um, at 506 pages, basically 300 pages of it is, of course, in English. It's Latin English, Latin English. It's, uh, it will it will melt your brain. You you won't you won't be able to get it. You won't. I mean, you will read it. One sentence will cause your brain to fold up like a cheap card table. Uh, you think I'm joking about that, but if you download it, other people have downloaded it, and they said, you know, I didn't believe you, but you're right. I don't get it. This is uh, easily stated Nikola Tesla's most favorite book. But I am getting directly to the topic and what uh, Nikola Tesla's uh, secret methodology was. Nikola Tesla was a true scientist, but let me point out to you that there are three types of scientists, and of course there's a scientist in connotation, a scientist in denotation. You actually have to have the best of both worlds, kind of like the best athlete who is the best physically might have really, really poor um, uh, you know, mental uh, fortitude. You know, They might have great muscles and be in perfect health, but you actually have to have both the mental and the physical. And Nikola Tesla, so far as a scientist, had the best of both of these worlds. He had an acute analytical mind, but he was also uh, experimentally and physically hands-on. Here we have, uh, just like Thomas Edison was hands-on, but I'm going to show you where Thomas Edison was a failure, even though Thomas Edison, I think, died with uh, 1,200 patents. Thomas Edison was a tinkerer. He was not a thinker. And I'm going to give you a quote from Nikola Tesla here directly about Thomas Edison, even though uh, uh, Tesla himself actually gave several favorable uh, quotes about Edison in his uh, later years. He also basically considered him to be a tinkerer, which is what Thomas Edison was. Anyway, Nikola Tesla is known both in Colorado, New Jersey, and countless other places to be incredibly hands-on. He has very gnarled, uh, farmer-like hands for a reason. I mean, he was forever known to be hammering on nails to build wood, wood structures to hold up the copper wiring for his countless uh, creations. He was a hands-on person, but he was extremely intellectual. Absolutely everybody knew he was extremely intellectual. You have to be an intellectual to even dare to read Theoria, Theoria Philosophia Naturalis. Here, what we let me lay out for you immediately now Nikola Tesla's great secret that nobody has mentioned before. We have one class of uh, of uh, inventors. You could say scientists, you could say inventors. There's connotation and denotation, but 
one class is someone that tinkers and they putts around, you know, forever, perpetually, or even short term, and they make an aha moment. And that's a good thing. Obviously, it got Thomas Edison very far, and of course, he was more of a businessman, obviously, so than Tesla, who died broke and penniless. Tesla made quite a few errors, but his errors were in business acumen. I mean, obviously, Nikola Tesla was uh, obviously the Steve Wozniak of his day, and definitely not the Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs, obviously, you know, couldn't build a freaking computer to save his life. And uh, But the two of them together, you know, for example, perfect analogy, made... Uh, uh, you know, Apple famous made Apple what it is today. I'm not giving praise to Apple, but the point is, is that Thomas Edison was a tinkerer. He was not an analytical, uh, an intellectual. He was absolutely not. Before getting to uh, Thomas Edison, this is a quote about Thomas Edison by Nikola Tesla. Um, let's uh, first start off uh, with a quote from Nikola Tesla. The exact wording is roughly to the point that and Tesla himself said about himself that he would build things in his mind and he would reconstruct them and reinvent them and run them in his own mind and he would redesign them he would perpetually build a device in his mind and you know tweak it and then after he built it he would run it to see where the failure points were this is a famous quote from Nikola Tesla now on to Thomas Edison if Thomas Edison had a needle to find in a haystack by the way this is a, this is Specifically, retroduction. This is a direct quote from Nikola Tesla. If Thomas Edison had a needle to find in a haystack, he would not stop to reason where it was most likely to be, but would proceed at once with the feverish diligence of a bee to examine straw after straw until he found the object of his search. Now, this is a deduction, induction. It is linear analytical thinking. This is what Nikola Tesla is, uh, you know, throwing dirt in the face of Thomas Edison for. Just as a little theory and calculation would have saved him 90% of his labor. He talked about this before on uh, Thomas Edison's light bulb. Nikola Tesla did in another quote. He basically accused Thomas Edison of tinkering his, uh, of tinkering and pissing his life away, uh, wasting an enormous amount of time when he could have arrived at the solution much, much quicker if he had you know, a strong intellectual mind to apply retroductive and analytical thought to problem solving before just putzing around like, well, that didn't work. That's not the way a light bulb does it. Well, this is another way. Yeah, that didn't work either. You know, it's on and on and on. I mean, Thomas Edison ruined a lot of his life doing this, and this is what Nikola Tesla said. Thomas Edison is that first sort of scientist. He putzes around, you know, he knows how equipment works, and he gets a little idea here and there along the way, but he's a tinkerer. Okay, and then, then there's another type of scientist on the opposite end of the spectrum of Nikola Tesla, who Thomas, uh, excuse me, that, uh, and this is the reason why uh, Nikola Tesla called Einstein a fuzzy-haired crackpot, and he said Einstein was a beggar dressed in the purple robes of a king who fools, you know, took, you know, as a king, um, because uh, um, Einstein, by the way, means one stone, which is also a slander. It actually means idiot, but literally Einstein's very name means idiot. But this is not about uh, Einstein. It's about scientists uh, of his time, which are far, far worse now than they even were in his time. Scientists of today think deeply instead of clearly. One must be sane to think clearly, but one can think deeply and yet be quite insane. Very important point on this, because, for example, like insane asylums, there are, and we've seen movies like this, and this isn't, you know, an valid fact. There are some incredibly intelligent you know, like chess masters and people that can do differential algorithms, you know, in their head. They could literally, like, write on an invisible chalkboard and do the math in their own mind, but they're insane. They're brilliant mathematicians, but they're completely insane. And this is entirely what quantum mechanics is today. This is a bunch. They're not scientists. Well, sure they are. They're PhD of science. No, they're mathematicians. Math doesn't explain anything. It's not hands-on. It doesn't have to be hands-on necessarily, but you actually have to have both the intellectual prowess, um, but also, uh, you know, the ability to know how to build things. So fundamentally, you know, how the, the universe works. Math doesn't explain anything. I mean, this notion of virtual particles and, 
you know, uh, gravitons and gluons and tachy... This sort of uh, cult of bumping particles is completely ridiculous. It has no basis in reality. Let's give another quote from Nikola Tesla on these type of uh, insane scientists. Today's scientists have substituted mathematics for experiments, and they wander off through equation after equation and eventually build a structure, a mathematical structure, which has no relationship to reality. And now this is obviously a quote from back in the early 19... Uh, 19 17, I believe. Anyway, this is so, so incredibly accurate. This is exactly what the, the idiots of uh, quantum are exactly like. They have literally substituted mathematics for building things and experimentation and rational science. Let me repeat those two words, rational science. Nikola Tesla was, above all else, a rational scientist. He's a person that actually had the intellectual prowess, but also, you know, had gnarled hands like a farmer with his hands in the dirt. I mean, he was constantly building stuff. The enormous flat coil behind Nikola Tesla in this image is of his own making. I mean, he hammered all those nails, he laid all that copper wire. That's his own creation. He had the best of both worlds. I mean, he has mine buried in the deepest book. I dare you to read Theoria Philosophiae Naturalis. You're never going to be able to do it. I mean that literally. You're not going to be able to do it. So Nikola Tesla, unlike on the one end of the bad spectrum of science, we have uh, a, someone who putzes around, tinkers, you know, f you know, basically Thomas Edison was a guy who was a clock, a broken clock that was running 24 hours a day. And of course, as we all know, a broken clock is right twice a day. And that's the secret of Thomas Edison's success is that he was always running but his clock was broken. In other words, intellectually, his clock was broken, but because he was always running, he at least hit it twice a day, exactly like a broken frigging clock. Eh? And on the opposite end of the spectrum, you have mathematicians who are called scientists, but who are not scientists at all. They create obtuse uh, equations that have, do not explain anything, and no aspect of math has ever explained anything. Math doesn't explain anything. Descriptions are not explanations. Just because the math works doesn't mean anything is a correct explanation of how the universe works. I'm not against math whatsoever, but math does not explain anything. Yeah, this is bean counting. Nikola Tesla is a guy with these. This is Nikola Tesla's secrets. These are two ideal pictures to juxtapose who he was and the secret of his success. Obviously, he was a brilliant person, not in question, but he had the two aspects that were necessary, absolutely necessary for supreme success. Well, actually, three. He had to have uh, the funds, and of course, he got funding you know, from various sources. Of course, the funding eventually ran out, but he had the time. You know, He wasn't uh, busy with wives and children. And uh, he was not encumbered by, you know, begging for food. He was there for a while, thanks to uh, Thomas Edison and his pathetic tomfoolery. So he didn't have a wife or children to, you know, bother his mind with, you know, the normal pathetic crap that normal human beings deal with. But he had the two aspects that modern scientists do not have. He had the intellect and he actually had the hands-on. You know, the marriage of these two is the merger, the perfect storm the perfect storm of intellectual perfection. No one's ever made a video on this, but this really is the fundamental secret of Nikola Tesla's success. That's not to say he wasn't born a brilliant person. I'm not saying that at all. But everybody out there actually has the capacity to cultivate these two things. Math itself isn't going to get you there. And math is not science. It's not. Well, sure it is. Everybody knows math is science. No, it's not. You know, these people build uh, crazy, uh, you know, unicorn... Uh, unicorn and leprechaun uh, nonsense explanations for the universe. Completely ridiculous, completely divorced from reality and common sense. I mean, 99.99% of so-called quantum science has no basis in reality. He is harebrained, wackadoodle, intellectually perverted nonsense. Poppycock, twaddle, ignoramus, hooey. Complete malarkey and baloney. Okay? Nikola Tesla had the intellectual prowess and he had the hands-on prowess. And he sat dead center opposite to two different types of so-called scientists. Thomas Edison, who is a tinkering putz, and then the mathematicians, who are not scientists, 
you know, who build an unconventional, unreal, you know, fantastical Star Wars level of wackadoodle nonsense with no connection to reality. Absolutely none. And this is Nikola Tesla's secret. It really is. I said this is not, uh, you know, robbing him of uh, being born a genius in any way, shape, or form. I'm just saying that anybody out there can come cultivate these things, and you should cultivate these things. This is a double exposure, by the way. Tesla would have been uh, electrostatically. By the way, there's another quote from Nikola Tesla. It says, among his favorite things, uh, he considers his favorite things to be books. So this is uh, Nikola Tesla in his, uh, this is actually his experimentation room, not his lab, but I mean, there's distinction without a difference, but uh, anyway. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you like this video. This is the uh, the only video that I know of. I know there's another video that presents, you know, the fundamental basis of Nikola Tesla's secrets. And uh, that was uh, his intellectual prowess combined with his hands-on wherewithal. Nikola Tesla built what you're seeing right here. I'm not saying he didn't have assistance. He did have assistance, but he was the guy with, you know, nails in his mouth, you know, hammering on wood as forms for his... Uh, is uh, uh, electrostatic and magnetic and uh, magnetoelectric uh, devices and uh, very very important and uh, like I said this is a Nikola direct uh, quote of retroduction this quote about uh, Thomas Edison is specifically retroduction he said that if he could have applied his mind instead of putzing around he would have arrived at the final result a lot quicker he would have saved himself 90 percent of his labor thank you so much for watching I hope you like this video it's actually an important one regarding Nikola Tesla, and if you like it, you can always click the link below. Have a lovely day, and lux everitas.